We're back, baby. Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. And in today's video, we are continuing our lovely build. We are going from this small little build and we are adding a couple more levels. <laughs> so don't forget to leave a like, a uh, comment on what you think of the build. Will you use it or not? That is a good question. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. But anyway, this is a long video, so we need to start going ASAP. Welcome to Fix It. I'm Bob, and today I'll be your... Get on with it! I'm screwed. All right, guys, in this one, we have gotten all the way up to tier number four. In terms of the other stuff, we've finished off alien organisms. We've done Caterium, same, pretty much same there. Uh, flower petals, mycelia, neutral slugs, power slugs, quartz. Uh, could unlock this stuff, but really didn't want to handcraft anything. And of course, we did some more sulfur. Now, in terms of hard drives, we have 41 left out of the 77 we use. So, if I open up my little calculator, so 77 minus 41, that is about 36 that we've used thus far. And that's to unlock every single thing. But don't worry, you won't need all 36 of them. I'm going to show you the alternate recipes you will need to uh, get this build going. So step number one is we're going to delete everything on the first floor because this is the room that we're going to need to build. Also, you're going to want to up this instead of the five lines coming in. You're going to want seven. Yes, seven lines of stuff coming in. Guess what? We're going to need it. And the first thing you're going to want to build is a foundry. Now, as you can see here, I'm right in the far corner like before. We're gonna build it right over here. And we're gonna build four of these. This is gonna be the foundries for our lovely iron ingots. So make sure you choose the recipe, which is an alternate recipe for iron ingot alloy. And the reason we're choosing this is, as you can see here, 20 plus 20, so that's only 40 units to make 50, which is gonna be amazing. That is going to give us a plenty of things for building. Next you want to do is you want to build three more. So one, two, three. And these lovely three are going to be for our copper alloy ingots, which also need copper and iron. And this is a 50 and 25, so 75 to make 100. As you can see here, this is going to give us a lot of copper as well as a lot of iron. And it doesn't take up that much space. Oh, wow. Next thing up is you want to grab a smelter and we're going to build five of these puppies. All right. So as you can see, I got them right near looking good, looking good. All right. And these are going to be our k -terium. Now, the reason we're using this for k and not an alternate recipe is, well, one, we don't have refineries. Two, this actually makes more items, but uses more products. Unfortunately, that is no bueno, but, you know, in this factory where we only have one line coming through, we don't need to worry about it. And last but not least, we're going to have to take some foundries over here, and we're going to build four foundries. Now, I tried being all, like, uh, special with these four and build them in such a nice, unique way because I want to leave some space over here to have that uh, stuff going up. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So we'll go like this, leave some space in there, and there we go. Then we have all four of those set perfectly. But we're not done, because what we need to do is we need to build six smelters back in this area. So as you can see, this is the nice middle part right here, but we're not going to build this in the middle. We're going to start from right here and build three going that way. And then we're going to go right here and we're going to build three going that way. 
and each one of these is going to be set up to our iron ingots now we could use foundries yes to make the iron ingots but for some reason this just works out so much better uh and it does produce us a, a little bit more iron ingots but hey <laughs> nothing wrong with a little bit of extra right now all we need to do is belt all this stuff up all right guys everything is belted up i'm not going to show you exactly how i did it but i will go over it not a lot of hand holding anymore so one of the first things you can see is i actually went three high with the splitters over here and the reason for that is if you actually take one of these conveyor lifts and put that there it goes the perfect height so it makes it really easy to get that nice perfect belt line oh that looks so good right there if you love lcd you can go this way but you can also put it down to two if you want that is completely up to you oh and also you see over here we have this where there's two lines going over there but yet just one line going over here and the reason for that is this takes 20 copper 20 times 4 is 80 and this takes 50 copper 50 times 3 is 150 so it needs almost two-thirds of that which only needs one-third and we have it divided by three so that works out perfectly that being said this line right here the first one in that's going to be your copper ore then we go into iron ore then caterium ore the fourth one is going to be on raw quartz where the fifth one will be limestone six will be coal and seventh will be a second iron ore and once we get over there i'll show you why that is so with the caterium one we did the specific uh five split that we normally do where it has a merger into a splitter and the splitter splits off into two different ways each one has three exits for it so that's six exits exits total the sixth exit goes back into the merger basically getting us a perfect five split no problem easy peasy uh as for this one right next to the last smelter for the caterium we're gonna put these two puppies right here now we are gonna delete these for when we go up to other floors and have to raise this up i just wanted to put these here as a way of showing you exactly where they're gonna go and they might go a little bit further out depending on that i just wanted to make sure they're there and of course we'll just be able to get rid of this and get rid of this and we'll be able to put them back easy peasy when we do that as for steel we got that going the same way that we did the one over there because it's four foundries and this works really good for getting a nice and compact but as you can see i put this straight on the ground just to go up so it can go over Everything that merges over here for the iron ingots for these smelters basically gets sent and merged in the center into there and gets split off into four. Easy peasy. Now it's up to you on if you want a perfect split like that or if you want to do a manifold system such as this one. But I chose for the iron a nice manifold system seeing as it all merges up into the center. So it kind of works out either way. We don't really need we're actually producing a just a smidge bit more because that's a 30 times six that's gonna be a hundred and eighty i believe and we need the uh alternate steel ingot recipe which means we need 40 so 40 times four is 160. so we got an extra 20 being made over there and i'm gonna you know actually put these on here before i forget whoopsies Oh, uh, but we got that going over there. Now, everything is pretty much set up, ready to go for this floor. The only thing we need to do is power. And for power, I'm just going to do what I did before and basically just hook it up to the ceiling. Nothing special on that. So let me hook up the power and then we'll go to the next floor and I'll show you how to do that. Oh, and as for the stuff, we are just basically merging everything together like we did before, except for the copper. We have these two merged together and this one's left separate. And I'll show you why when we get to the next floor. Otherwise, everything's merged together and I have these two going all the way down at the end, which I'll show again later when we actually get to that floor. Other than that, let's do power and get to the next floor. All right, everybody. So on floor two, this is actually going to be really beneficial for us as floor two as just constructors and like the last board before of what we had for the previous build we also had just constructors on this one so it'll be really easy to switch this one over so on this floor what you want to do instead of basically deleting everything that's on here 
go through each and every one of them and make sure you choose the proper recipe. So we need to make the first five of these into iron plates. Now the next thing we can do is just delete the stuff that we made here, connecting this one into this. Delete the merger you had previously. Don't worry, we'll be putting this back in a second. And basically, just connect these two. And you're basically going to do this for anything that you have to, going all the way across. Next up, go into the industrial storage. Make sure it lines up perfectly, and we're going to keep it at that white line over there. So as you can see, the white line is pretty much right here. Boom. And then we're going to hook these all up into there. And you're going to do the same thing all the way going down. Then what you can do is you can take all the plates that were on the old one and move them straight into the new one. Easy peasy, right like that. And if it takes a couple trips, that's no problem. Oopsie, I just noticed that I made one tiny little issue. So instead of there being three screws, there is actually going to be four screws. Sorry about that, guys. And then we switch over to the four for the copper sheets one two three and four leaving the copper sheets exactly the way that they used to be no harm no foul Whoop, put that back in there and give me one second while i change the front of this to reflect what it needs to be so give me one minute on that all right ladies and gentlemen as you can see right here i got each one set up where it just basically comes down and gets merged in there we still have some residuals kind of pouring out from before so that's always good and in case you have any that don't go in there you can always take them out no problem now we have everything changed up the only thing we need to do is go on this side and basically change up the way we have everything because unfortunately the way that it's set up right now is not gonna work so let me fix up this side and show you how i did it all right, everybody, we're ready to go over what we just did over here. As you can see, I uh, divided by five for this lovely one, divided by four for this lovely one, got rid of some holes over here for the floor to get stuff up, divided by four. Now, this is going to be for the copper sheets and then divided by five over here for the lovely limestone turning into concrete. Now, I got some hole on the end over here. That's going to be the steel for the next floor. But this one right here, this is going to be for the limestone. Now, as we said, this one right here is going to be for the limestone. So what you want to do is you want to take this. All right, we'll put it in the middle right here. And then if you kind of stand here, you can see that it's coming up like that. Now, I went this way with it. And then I grabbed my nice conveyor belt lift and I went over here. Now, personally, I'm too OC to let this just slide like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this. That means I gotta get rid of these two. And I'm just gonna basically put it out and see if I can match it up easy peasy. It might take two tries or it might take one try. Oh, it took one try, hooray! And then I'll just connect the middle one right here. And then of course, this one perfectly goes right here. And that's pretty much set to make limestone. All right, as for the copper one, we're going to leave the copper until we do the next floor because we're going to need copper up there. That's why we have all these holes over here. But this one right here, as well as that one right there, is all going to be iron ingots. So what I'm going to do is going to take this and go all the way over here with this, maybe to this line because it just looks so perfect. And what we want to do is we want to set it so they both come up over here. Now, I did change the way that this went over here. What I did was I had these three hooked together going this way, and then this one coming around going that way. Then all I need is my solid conveyor belt lift, and I'm ready to go. Now, I'm using a conveyor belt lift mark one for this side, and it's just going to come up, and it's just going to be flat like that. Then I'm going to take a conveyor belt lift mark three, for the other one because this is going to have a hundred and fifty units on it and we're going to have this one coming over like that now this needs a merger on it all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to take our merger and i'm going to put my merger right here okay so i want this line to come out here but i also want to line it up right like so so i'm going to put it like this now, the reason I did this is this has to come over here and connect it. 
Because for a five output set, the six output has to be merged back in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this coming all the way over here. And then this is going to merge up like that. Easy peasy. Oh my God, look how good it is. Then of course I go back down here and I have this merged together. I know some people will have it where they drag it and then they bring it out over there. I don't like that because then it never really technically connects. So we don't need that. So anyway, there's the conveyor belt mark one. So this is going to be 50 units per minute. So that means it only needs a number one on it and it should come out. And oh my God, look at that link up perfectly like that. That takes care of all the iron as well as the limestone. We'll do the copper for the next floor and of course steel for the next floor and maybe some Katerium too. Who knows? Speaking of next floor, we need to go to the next floor. And unfortunately, this next floor, well, it does suck. So as we can see from our list, yes, I did change the number on here. So it says four constructors. My bad on that. Sorry, guys. Uh, but as you can see, we need six assemblers for quick wire, two assemblers for wire, two constructors for cable, uh, three constructors for steel pipes, two for iron rods, and two for steel beams. And to do this, you're going to have to, well, let's just say you're going to have to clear off this whole floor because we're going to still need to build the floors for the other levels. So it will just be easier just to go for a nice clean slate. Lucky for me, mods do help with this, but you guys can always, you know, mass dismantle all this stuff. And there we go. A nice clean slate. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, guys, now for the next floor, what we want to do is we want to grab a nice little constructor and see how we have that where it's up against the line. So we have two solid foundations before we start the entrance to it. Well, we're going to do the same thing for this lovely chap over here, and we are going to build seven at first. So that's going to be two for steel beams, two for iron rods, and three for steel pipes. Next, we're going to switch over to our assemblers, and we're going to line those up, see how it's lined perfectly. But of course, we're going to be right next to those, and we're going to build six of those. And this is going to be for the fused quick wire. Then we want to grab a, another constructor. All right. And we're going to build two of those. But, 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 and this is very important. You want to leave a little space. So we'll say about maybe two over. Let's see. One, two. And those two right there are going to be for cable. So let's set everything up real quick. And we're going to have to kill this hole right here. This will bring us the steel and caterium up to this, as well as we're also going to need the one. All right. That is going to be for the copper. Now, I forget which one it is, but I'll show you in just a second. Once I start setting up all of these, I'll show you how it's done. All right, peeps, we are ready to go. So. First things first, you're going to want to take all your stuff with a Mark III belt and bring it up here. So this one's going to be the steel, and this one over here is going to be the caterium. Now, what we want to do for the steel is we want the steel to come in here. Now, it's going to come right over here, like so. And we're going to take our nice little belt and we're going to bring it over. Now, half of it needs to go over here. Now, this is going to be for the steel beams. And the reason we need half is because it needs a lot. Now, as for this one, oh my god, this one's going to be interesting. So, see how I got the corners pretty much matching right over there, like that? And we're going to have it going this way. As you can see, I'm holding it, and it's going that way. And we're going to have another one where it's coming in the middle. And then we're going to have a merger where it goes out the opposite way. So it basically comes in the center. One goes left, one goes right. Now we just grab our stuff and we're going to bring it through like so. Connect the middle. Connect the middle. One going this way. And one going that way. Why did we do this extra stuff and just not have a splitter? We got to connect this one. So this one right over here, and as you can see, is perfect and perfect. And basically the way it works is this one over here, like 
it only needs about maybe yeah, not even that much so we need most of it to go over to these three over here that needs 30 30 and 30 that's gonna be 90 over there where this one over here needs 16 60 so that needs 120 which is going to be half that's going to leave us another 120 now we need 90 to go over there and 30 to go over there and everything's all set up now in terms of this one we need copper and caterium now you can see i have it split up perfectly like so so half goes in from here to here and the other half goes over there and each one splits up into three nice and ocd friendly oh my god look how good that belt work is now this is why we didn't know which one we were doing because right like so we get rid of this one and probably this i don't really like floating things we can basically connect da, 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 this down here to where the copper is going to be now the copper is going to be split off into here and i'll show you how to do that in just a second but the other suction on the top that is going to be the caterium which is this one over here. What you want to do is you want to take this and you want to bring it down. This is going to be your caterium one. So basically it goes right to about, well, a little further than here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take my splitter and put a splitter right there. Next, what we do is we take the belt and we bring it all the way over here into the splitter. Easy peasy. Now, the next thing you're going to need is a stackable conveyor poles. So we'll put these right in the middle like so. And we're going to put them too high. Then we're going to grab our belt again. Bring it right in here and connect that one over there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this, which is our conveyor lift. Grab our belt again and do it on the top conveyor pole. Come on. Oh, no. It's a little finicky if you miss. Don't worry about it. Just try again. Then we take a conveyor bolt and we're going to build that basically over here. Line it up. Bring it over. And easy peasy. Then we line this little pupper up. And do our nice little 90 degree turn. And we did it. This one's a little bit of pain in the butt, but overall, it looks great. All right, guys, like I said, next thing up is going to be our lovely copper. Let's get this out of the way. So what we got going on is we have 100 coming out of here, and these two together is 200. Now, the problem is that this up here, hold on, let me go, is 37.5 copper ingots times six. That's 225. So we need 25 out of this one to come up with us. So what we need to do is first we need to take a splitter. So if we go over to uh, number eight on uh, mine is a splitter. All right, we're going to put that little pupper right here. And then we're going to take a nice, lovely merger, which is number seven for me. And I'm going to put the merger right like so. Then I'm going to take another splitter and have that splitter going right here. And, and then I'm going to connect it all up and explain to you what it does. So basically, it's going to split 50 and 50 and 50 goes in here. Then this is going to split that 15 to 25 and 25 and 25 will go into here. So this one right here is going to give us 75 total for these lovely nil things. So we're going to have this one coming up and basically going over we're going to leave a space in the middle that's where we're going to put a merger so let's grab a merger going right here and let's go in to the and let's have it going to the left all right connect this up over here and then connect this one over here that'll give us 225. then we just have one thing that's going to be basically there we go and we'll have our 225 going straight up into the machines. Easy peasy. Now, in terms of the front of this, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Merge it together, go in a bin. Merge it together, go in a bin. Merge, merge into a bin. Leave the nice little quick wire for right now till we go to the next one. Now, in terms of the wire, that's going to be a little bit different. Because, as you can see, the exit port is on this line. And we really want to keep it centered right over here. 
So that is where we're going to put the merger going over here. And then we're going to take a splitter and we're going to put a splitter right next to it. Easy peasy. We're going to hook the splitter up. And then, of course, we're going to hook the merger up going like so. And then we're going to take the other splitter, the other side of splitter, and we're going to have it go in between the machines. Now, because we left two space for that, it should be perfect. And if we get this just right, there we go. So now what happens is the excess wire is going to come over here and start making cable. And then, of course, right like so, we're just going to have this merging into a nice little bit. Then, much like the other floors, we just have to hook up the power on the ceiling and then work our way to the next floor. All right, everybody, on to the next floor. Yes, that is right. We are doing floor number four. Hooray, we're almost done. Sorry about the long video, but it does take a while to explain these things. Uh, this floor is going to be six constructors and nine assemblers. As you see, this is going to be a lot of interesting belt work. But as we build it, the easy way to do it is we're going to take ourselves another constructor like we did before. We're going to go over two and we're going to have it facing the same way. And we're going to build another six of these. Easy peasy on that one. Then in terms of the assemblers, we're going to build those as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to face them the opposite way. So where the orange is coming off this side, this side is going to be green and we're gonna build nine of these bad boys now, as you can see i started it at the line here just to see how it would look and it lines up perfectly for that so we're gonna have nine of these going across like so now these first three is going to be silica and quartz crystals which one's which guess what turns out it doesn't matter just pick which three you like for which one and have at it because you're not really going to need the silica or the quartz crystals unless you want to make those lovely little stuff that we were making before, uh, which is the crystal oscillator. Unless you want to use silk for an alternate recipe, but who wants to do that? Next up is trying to pick the which ones we're going to do for these. We're going to start off with the encased industrial beams. Now, we're going to use the alternate recipe for industrial pipes instead of the beams, because that'll be so much better. Then the two that we're going to choose for this one is going to be the stators, the quick wire stators, because obviously that is definitely the better choice. Then let's set two of these up to AI limiters. Why? Because, well, they look really great when you shove them in the resource sink. <laughs> Sorry. And then we're going to choose two of the rotors. We're going to do the uh, we're going to do the copper rotors that we did before. So we're going to have at least one of those. And then we're going to switch over to the iron plate and wire, also known as the stitch iron plate one, because we have a lot of wire and we want to go that way. Easy peasy for that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up all the lovely belt work for this again, like I did before and show you how I did it. So I just noticed that I did one thing incorrectly, and then that's instead of having this over here, what I needed was, I need this to come back a little bit right like so. See, the problem is I gotta put something over here, which is a <laughs> merger, unfortunately. And that merger is pretty much gonna be right in the center. So as you can see, that is going to be a little bit difficult. What is it right here so yeah it's gonna be like eh, two more back so basically all these right like so none of these are done correctly anyway let me move those i just wanted to let you guys know because i know you're building along with me and this this might be an issue all right everybody let's start belting things up here as you can see i got it nice and separated ocd style i know right uh, and I'll explain it as each machine goes by. So this first machine needs iron plates and wire. So if we delete this floor right down here, we'll see that, oh my God, has that been right here for wire? It's like I planned this or something. So we bring this nice little one up here and we just basically go like so. 
and then we can hook it up right here on the bottom and that'll get us the wire now we're gonna have to go a little bit more further down just to get the iron plates wait a minute is that the iron plates no way i can't i don't even know what to say so let's try it right here oh my god look at that look at that as you can see right here it just works out perfectly that goes over the top here no clipping then we go all the way to the bottom look at that look at that and then this little pupper comes right over here and of course we can do our nice little maneuver and we now have a 90 degree one easy peasy so we're going to work on the next group of three, which is actually going to be interesting. So first thing we want to do is want to delete the floor right here. As you can see, it's a nice and OCD hooked up. But as you can tell, three of them are hooked up to one splitter and then two of them are hooked up to another splitter. And then you have one off to the side. So the way we got this is this top one, one, two and three is all going to be da 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 da. Copper sheets. Yes, we're going to need copper sheets for three of these. The bottom one is going to be quick wire for these two. And this one right here is going to be screws. So in terms of this bottom one, that is going to be quick wire. Now, lovely little quick wire is going to be in these three ones right here. So what we want to do is we want to basically angle it exactly like we have that one going out right here. And we're going to take our nice little thing, our conveyor belt lift mock three, and we should have it perfect. Now, if you didn't get it perfect, you can just try again. Don't worry. It's a not that big a deal. So basically just maneuver the exit to the proper one and make sure it lines up with the ones that are before. And then we're going to make sure that it goes through. Perfect. Next thing you're going to want is the copper sheets for this top one. Now, the copper sheets, if we recall, is going to be all the way down here in this box right here. But we're going to be blocking this box and that'll be bad. What we want to do is we want to get rid of this one right here. We're going to take ourselves a conveyor lift. We're going to do what we did on the other one. We're going to basically go a little bit of it right here, aim in the proper way and bring it up. But instead of going over like this, what I want you guys to do is I want you to bring it down over here. <laughs> I know. Isn't that weird? Whatever could we be doing with that? Well, that one right there, that's going to be the screws that we need for this one. So let's get this one aimed up perfectly and bring that in there. Now I have my nice little screws coming in. And make sure your screws are on the highest belt because they're screws and why the hell not? Now, in terms of the copper sheets, the copper sheets have got to come in here somehow. Am I right? Well, what you want to do is you want to go over here. And as you can see from a nice aerial view, I want them to come up. But I also need them to come over right there. So as you can see right here, I am a little bit over try and get to the best of your ability right in this spot so basically it's completely in the middle and it's in this line right here i don't know if that that helps and then you should be able to have it coming over there that should be no now in terms of the copper sheets what you want to do is you want to bring it right over here now you want to find the middle of it but instead of where this line is, one more over. So basically right there. This is where you want it to be. Two thirds over on the nice little sheet and going like that. Now what you want to do is you want to aim it perfectly like we did for the other ones. And if we did everything right, it should be a perfect yes, 90 degree one going in there. Now all we got to do is hook up the proper bins. Now this one is going to come all the way over here. And it should go right in here, a perfect 90 degrees. Now, this one, unfortunately, oh, it is. We just blocked our way. Whatever are we going to do? Well, turns out that if you go like this and up like that, it's a perfect one over here. 
Unfortunately, that's the opposite way. So we got to figure out a way to switch it. So as you can see how it sticks out a little bit more when it goes in here, what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to instead where it would, we think it would be, we have to go one back. Then we're going to take our thing and go and perfect. Then I could just delete this, delete this, and I can connect this to here and have this basically going over here. And as you can see, I got the screws now going in there as well as the copper sheets in the proper spot. Now, in terms of quick wire, because I bet some of you are wondering, well, how do I get all this quick wire to go perfectly? Well, what you want to do, this is amazing. So once you get it in the proper spot, you're going to take a merger and you're going to have the merger going the opposite way. All right, now trust me on this one. And what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have this one going out. Now using the fastest belt for all of these because trust me, it's just, it's just better that way. We're gonna get these pretty much set to go. Then you're gonna take a number six for me, that's the conveyor belt mark three and have it going inward. And then it's just a perfect set going across to wherever you need it. This way you have this in the proper spot, even though you don't have the mergers going in the proper spot. Cause let's say we put a merger right here. It might not do the 90 degree turn and we don't need that. And on to the final three that we need from this one over here. As you can see, we did the same thing that we did over there where we got this split up. But as you can see, it's doing the same thing as well. We need three different things going over here. And those three different things are going to be steel pipes going for each and every single one of those, as well as the bottom one being quick wire, similar to that one. So we're going to be able to destroy this right mirror. And that one is going to be quick wire going down. We're going to do the same thing that we did over there is we're going to grab a bin. All right. And we're going to aim it perfectly going out here. This one's nice because it's right in the center and that one right. So so as we take our lovely conveyor lift and we put it into the center, there we go. And we put a belt on there. We now have a quick wire going into here as well as quick wire going into here. And I up the, I up the production on those belts just to be sure, because we need a lot of quick wire. Actually, just to be safe, whether we need it or not, I'm going to up the production on this one as well. Now, in terms of the top one for here, we're going to need steel pipes going into there. Now, where did we make the steel pipes? Well, those should be this one right here. Now, I want to do the same thing that I did for that one. So using my trusty, rusty little spot, I got to figure out exactly where that is. As you can see, this one's not center, so that's going to be an issue. So actually, it might just be easier to do it right like so, and then having it coming over on the top. Yeah, that's just going to be the easiest way to do it. Why, why mess with anything that's not broken? You know what I mean? You know what I mean. All right. And the last thing that we're going to need is the concrete coming right here. So we can delete this one as well as deleting this one and we can basically bring it all down. Now, unfortunately, it wants to be stupid and not work perfectly because we got, unfortunately, these plates in the way. So basically, this is going to come over here. This is right where it's going to be at when it comes up. Pretty much right on the edge. I'm one step over the edge. So what I like to do is I like to have just this going just over this just enough, then going up. And if everything is perfect, it always is. It basically just comes over here 100%. And I could just replace this with a conveyor belt mark three all the way over. And it looks like I built it like that this whole time. It's like I'm a genius. Actually, it's like I've planned this and built it before and figured out a better way to do it. <laughs> and then we have the concrete coming over. And then all we got to do is now hook up this one over mirror, which is going to be duh, 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 our steel pipes. 
And now we have the steel pipes and the concrete going over there, fixing up and finishing up everything that we need to build. The only thing left to do is to hook up power like we've been doing for every single floor, and we'll go to the very top floor. So, give me a minute. Alright guys, final level. We need automating wire at one, one for the motor, one for the smart plating, five for the modular frames, and two for the versatile framework. So with a total of 10 assemblers at the top, what we're going to do is we're going to grab an assembler and we're going to start building. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip the first two foundations, kind of similar to somehow we've been doing it before. And with it going forward, and I mean this way forward, as in the forward of the building, we're going to basically build one. Then we're going to skip it. We're going to put this one in the center and we're going to build one here. Then we're going to skip it in the center and we're going to build a third one. Then we're going to skip it and we're going to put it in the center and we're going to build five. And as you can see on the five, they kind of just go perfectly like that and look amazing. So build those wonderful five. Now we're going to skip this one, kind of build it right here and build one. And then we're going to skip this one and build it and build one. Actually, you know what? Let's move these two a little bit further. We have the room so we can do whatever we want. Let's leave it a little bit more space and build it like that. That looks more uniform and more nice. Now I am going to get all the wonderful little belt work set up and let you know how to do it. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the final floor. So how do we have this set up? So we got a splitter in here and a splitter over there because this first one over here is going to take stators and cables. Now, if you remember correctly, yes, you do. We have uh, cables being made right over here. So because I've been deleting these floors going up over here for like a stairwell or anything else that I need, it was easy just to turn one over here, have it go straight up, straight over, and in. Easy peasy. As for the middle one, that's going to be motors, which needs rotors and stators. As well as this one over here, that needs reinforced plates as well as rotors. That's going to be the smart plating. So that's why I have the two splitters going right there. Now, the reinforced iron place also goes for these five over here. So that's why I got a splitter going right here where I got half of it going there and the other half going back. Now, in terms of the bins, this bin right here, this is the one that makes my reinforced iron plates. So all I did was take this, make it go straight up, have it go over, split it, then delete the floor, and that's ready to go. As for this one right over here, this is going to be for this one all the way back here, which is going to be the stators. So the stators are going to come down and they're just going to go straight over. And basically, you're going to just use a piece going straight over and going the opposite way. I put them right next to each other because it just looks it just looks swell. <laughs> then it's going to be split off over there. Nice and easy. Now, in terms of the rotors, this might seem tricky, but let me show you real quick. So now to do this one, it looks a little bit difficult, but it's a lot easier than you'd think. So let's get rid of this conveyor belt right here. And what you want to do is you want to see right where that goes up on the edge. See how it sticks out like that? So that's where we're going to build this one. So let's turn this around and it's going to look something like this. So basically see how that's in line with this one? Nice and easy. And then we're going right up to this line. So we just have this one right like so. Just one piece, easy peasy. Then we take the other one, clip it straight to that. And we're going to go over here and we're going to basically go this direction. Now, if we did this right, this should go right into here at a perfect 90 degree angle. Now, what we can do is we can delete this one and put a piece right here for a nice, easy sweep. Then we go over and we take that one and we connect it back over. And of course, that's our stator one, right? That is our stator, right? Yeah, stators. So then we got our stators hooked perfectly right into there. And we got everything going. Now, in terms of this one, which is the modular frames, as you can see, I got the splitter for the heavy, uh, for the reinforced iron plates going into there. And this just splits up into five like we've been doing before. You all know how that's done. Now, in terms of the iron rods that go into there, 
as well as the steel beams that go under there. All I did was over here, as you can see in this nice little corner, I just have these two puppies coming in, getting put right together, easy peasy. And then one going one way, one going the other, and it gives me a nice perfect split. As for these two right here, this is the versatile framework, so it needs modular frames. So that's why the modular frames, even though they march together, the only one turns sideways, so that this thing can go in here, go over, and right in. And that's it. The only other thing we need to do is connect power to it, and we're all set to go. And what I've been doing for the power has been just a nice little power pole going all the way up to the top. And then I'll just basically put power poles in the middle of here or somewhere, depending on where the power is, and try not to clip. Other than that, it's up to you. All right, and all that's left to do is hook up some power. And there we go. Lovely part about this is once I hook up power, I can actually tell what's working and what's not, what recipes I set, and if I forgot to hook anything up to power. That's right, I had some residual stuff that was going through some of these. <laughs> oh well. But as you can see, I just went power poles on the top. Everything is set perfectly and ready to go. I just gotta hook up some stuff. And just to give you some perspective, after building this whole thing, I was letting this run as I was building this. So all this stuff was hooked up, ready to go, and I started building this once I started the timer on this. So in that time frame, as you can see, the bottom, it's still going pretty slowly, but as you can see, it's filtering through quite nicely. In terms of this, yeah, we've got a whole 24,000 screws extra, 4,800 of these nice iron plates extra. If we go over here, we got a full bin of concrete. That's just the second floor. There's no bins on the first floor anymore. Uh, we have a full bin of iron rods. Those are going pretty well. And it looks like the wonderful steel beams, or sorry, steel pipes, are just in and out. In terms of quick wire, we have two full bins of quick wire. We're not going through that very quick. Full bin of wire, as well as, oh, the cable is actually holding very strong. This is why we put the splitter on the wire, because, yes, it pulls in quite nicely. Actually, we can up this one to a conveyor belt mark two after a while and produce more cable. I put a conveyor belt mark one, but a conveyor belt mark two will do this perfectly. Wire is more important to have than cable because that comes on later, but that'll definitely catch things up. In this one right here, we have literally nothing say, ooh, AI limiters. These are great for throwing right into the resource sink, you know, getting yourself some tickets. Plenty of stators, those are always good. And re oh, in case industrial beams, yay. Oh, and then of course we got a full thing of silica and a full thing of, uh, these things again oh yeah quartz crystals and then let's go up to the top floor we have about 1400 oh my god the versatile framework is loading up quite nicely uh the <laughs> the, the modular frames are loading up quite nicely as you can see here this is getting plenty of stuff for it to run no worries there Ooh, look at this one. What do we got? Smart plating? Plenty of smart plating. About 500. And a oh, whole plenty of motors. And of course, uh, plenty of uh, versatile. No, not uh, uh, automated wire. Ugh. I'm sorry, guys. I have trouble saying some of these words. They're really hard. They're all industrial and everything. But as you can see, this is just with it running for like, I don't know, the amount of time it took me to build that while flying in creative mode. So as you can see, once you build it, it goes up pretty quickly. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. Sorry, it was a long video, but this is kind of, well, really super cool. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a like. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or you just want to say if you like the build or not. 
And also don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this as a free world so you guys can actually come in and check it out. It is an early access, so you can use mods and take a look at it if you want to make sure that you got everything just perfect. I'll leave it right here where you have that one as well as that one. No problem. Oh, uh, and then you'll have all the love. <laughs> then you'll have all this lovely stuff where you can see every single hard drive that you could have gotten. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. I'll see you in the next video when we start working on Season 2 of Satisfactory Let's Play. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one. Bye-bye.